Hello and welcome to The Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is The Valley Business Today, an extra Wednesday of the month. That means we're sitting in the conference room at the Frederick County EDA. Patrick Barker, the director of the EDA, is here with me. Patrick, thank you for taking some time to chat with me today. Always a pleasure, Chad. And we're going to revisit something that we talked about a couple of years ago, Live Love Shenandoah. You guys were in the very early stages of launching that, so I'm excited to see what it is now and why it's important. Sure. Just for the listeners who recall recall, this is the initiative that the regional economic developers banded together with, understanding that so much of what we do in trying to retain and attract companies is rooted in the talent. And we can only be as successful as the talent that we have in our community. So we knew it was really important to make sure that we had an appropriate strategy, or I call it a cookbook, on how to best retain our talent and subsequently also look to try to attract other talent to the market. So we had this consultant group out of New York do this big kind of cookbook strategy. And it came to us with really some low hanging fruit and some ones that are a little bit taller on the tree. And to date, I'm really, really proud to say we've done a lot of the low hanging fruits and we're making our way up the tree. So things are very bright. The group is very active and vibrant about it, but we've just started in, in it, but we're far much further along than we were two years ago. I would think there's a lot of education for just the general public to know what's available so that talent knows that they should stay because something is here for them. Right. It's a double whammy effort to make sure our existing talent knows that there's still a lot of jobs here, a lot of careers here, and a lot of good, fun things to do on a various level of whatever your outside of work itches are. But we also found out, particularly from the outsider's perspective, how little people knew our area for something. They really didn't associate it with the Northern Shenandoah Valley is this, which was great and not. Less optimum yeah. that it's great because it's a whole, it's a fresh chalkboard. We can throw both the, any, we could really go to the kind of the niches or the taglines that the report gave us and say, these are it. So we're in the process of being that strategic, throwing mud on a wall and trying to see what really sticks. And I say that with that because one of the, one of the upper hanging fruits that we had to tackle is exactly what you said was awareness. We've got our website, which we've had up, which is liveloveshenandoah.com talk about that a little bit more. But once we had that up, we knew we needed some dynamic information to get out to the market, both existing again, but also to the outside. So we had some great little 30 second videos created with the tag, with the niche. Again, because we had no market presence, we could be a little bit different, try things that would set us apart in the market. So if you go to our website, you go on YouTube, you'll see the theme is don't visit, live here. And it was done with kind of a, a tongue-in-cheek kind of method in that it's not as if we don't want people to visit, it's just that we want you to visit. And stay. But stay, correct. But again, with marketing being what it is, you're trying to find ways to differentiate yourself. What's more shocking than someone telling you not to visit someplace? <laughs> but then obviously again- Now you, you gotta check along, that out. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So the videos were built off of various different aspects. Again, what we know the research tells us are important to people when they're looking to stay or and or come. Obviously jobs, healthcare, schools, dining, eating, playground, all those aspects of it. So we had several, I think there's six to eight different videos on those items with local people featured in them saying the taglines with local aspects of that. So we've got that aspect done, so we did that. The next thing was getting it to the market. Obviously, you're in the marketing business. It's just not as easy as putting something <laughs> on Facebook or Instagram <laughs> or LinkedIn and thinking that it's all just going yeah. to come it, to you. It is road. not a if you build it, they will come mechanism. Correct. So the next step we have, now the videos are done, is we have a social media expert that is going through on a, a aggressive paid advertisement scheme, again, to the local market, but also to outside the market. The study, when they did it, they were keen to tell us outside of your local market, here are other markets where you're already seeing people moving to the area from. So these are the ones you should probably try to do. That's the low hanging fruit of the outside market. Yeah, it, some low, again, versus just throwing darts when a blindfold. And here we have a little bit strategic idea on where to go. That process has started. Obviously, it'll take some time for those things to, to soak and cook to give us results. But 
We feel strongly the videos are good. That's just the social media person really seems to understand what our goal is. So come back in six months uh, <laughs> and we'll see where the results are. So that's the one aspect that we have going on. The second one is, again, was another one of the a higher up fruit for this effort was we know that when people come to visit a tourism event, for a lot of people, that's their quasi first date to the area. Justin Kearns says and that exactly, a that, lot. That, that, just, <laughs> Justin Kearns, trademark phrase. So I make sure I give him credit for that. So on that model, it was, we went through and we've identified more of the regional tourism events where our prime workforce talent market, that 25 to 44 demographic, is most likely to attend. Again, that's just one of those mud on the walls, and we've done three or four so far. We had a customized tent set up with, obviously, the call to action aspects on getting people to, to, to scan a QR code, to fill out information, to get on our mailing list. We provide the idea on come talk to us about jobs, and we provide individually packaged, locally produced products. So think about your Capri Suns, your Rattle 11 potato chips, those things to try and encourage people to come and talk to us. Because again, we know you're coming to a wine fest. Your first and second priority is probably not to talk to someone that's looking to, but again, the idea to just to try different aspects of it. So that's in process. I would say the results have been mixed. We're, we've got a couple others planned, but we're looking maybe to throw in the mud on a different mm-hmm. wall. It's not something that's going to happen overnight anyway. You're no, not going to have 50 people come to a wine festival and 40 of them call you the next day and say, oh my gosh, yeah. I have to move here. What, yeah, what's but available? Again, we have metrics. We know the primary goal of this being presence on regional tourism events is how many people scan the QR code and sign up for the mailing list. And we know that, again, it, this is not an overnight sensation that's going to happen. And we know that this this process we're doing may need to be, using the COVID word pivoted or altered in some way, but we're following the cookbook. We're getting advice back and forth from the consultant saying, well, this kind of worked, but what else have you seen that we can get a better ROI out of it? So we feel pretty confident between the social media side of it, our presence at regional tourism events and some other ones that we have baked in for the future that or at least starting that process, as you said, in marketing, it takes a little bit to get that market penetration, but we have strong metrics in place so that we can ensure that we're spending the energy correctly again. This is all being done in in partnership, so everyone's taking a little piece of the pie because there's not a full-time person that their job is just this effort. So So when you say regional, what does that look like? Regional, the regional group includes the city of Winchester, Frederick County, Clark County, Shenandoah County, and Warren County. So it's what we traditionally think of as the Shenandoah Valley. Valley. No, Shenandoah Valley, correct. Because that is how we were told that these efforts, you're selling a region. And the report that they gave us was very keen on that you've got a region that has really a, a lot of different faces <laughs> to it. So then that's great in the fact that you can appease a lot of different audiences. Again, it's a challenge at the same time because since not having one or two, you've got to, but again, these are all, I guess, wonderful challenges to have in front of us. We've got a wide audience, so we have more potential people that we can try to reach out to. It's a smart route to take as well. My early days in radio, I did radio sales, and some of my most successful clients were companies that needed to hire people. And there's a ton of data out there that says you're more likely to get someone to apply for a job at your location if they already have a job. And things like radio, things like social media, get those people when they are not even, they don't even realize they're looking for a job, but you pique their interest with something that is of interest to them. And it's so much easier. And we've definitely have found, at least with the regional talent, uh, regional tourism events and such, that jobs are the reason why people come up. Like you, they're either in the process of starting to look for a new job and or they're at that point where just out of curiosity, because again, we know from the research that one of the primary driving factors for someone to relocate is a job. If it's not family, it's the job. Again, we're confident on how our marketing processes are rooted. Now it just comes down to tweaking the execution to make sure we get the results we're seeking. And it makes sense too in the grand scheme of things because since the pandemic, people are looking at jobs differently. Yeah, again, every, the whole pandemic changed a lot of things. And again, the remote worker aspect is 
probably the pendulum's moving a little bit on that, but the idea that people have reestablished priorities. Mm -hmm. And we've always seen that here. So we've seen a resurgence of that, particularly the ones that we've talked to from outside the market. It's never been out here before. I didn't realize there was so much more. Oh my gosh, I didn't realize there's all these kind of companies out here. And then you start peeling back the layers and then they begin to say, Maybe it's just something that down the road. So that's why we try to, again, when they come, push them to go check out our website. Because the website, the liveloveshenandoah.com, is really meant to be a business interactive calling card for people that are here and ones that are looking to come to the market. We've added a whole bunch of features to that. Let's take a break. When we come back, let's dive into the sure. website. Talk a little bit more about that. Does that work? Absolutely. Right. We're going to do all that. When we come back, we are sitting at the conference, in the conference room at the Frederick County EDA. Patrick Barker is here with me. We're talking about LiveLoveShenandoah.com. Go check it out during the break, and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Hello, everyone. I'm Stephen. And I'm Kim. We would love to meet you at our new Winchester Cider Works tasting room on East Piccadilly Street in Old Town. That's right. We'll be downtown with great ciders, wine, food, and even beer. And the best part is we're so excited to be part of this brand new passport program where you just need four stamps from Winchester area breweries and cideries to get some great free swag. So pop by our tasting room and we'll get you a passport. You can find out more information at Winchester Brew Trail. Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is the Valley Business today, the extra Wednesday of the month. That means we're sitting at the Frederick County EDA office. Patrick Barker, their director, is here with me. We've been talking about Live Love Shenandoah, a regional effort to have people not visit, but live here. <laughs> Correct. So again, what we really are want people to do is we're not asking, I think we're very optimistic in the standpoint that as people decide to relocate or stay is an individual decision. We want to make sure in this effort that people are armed with the information they have to make it that educated decision. So that's why we stress so much to people to go to the website of liveloveshenandoah.com on there, they're going to find a lot of things of value. One, it's going to give them a massive regional job board. This is indeed plus a whole bunch of others. So it's a one-stop shop. We have as a system that pulls in jobs from, I think, six or seven plus other job boards. Oh, wow. So it provides people with a really quick way to get on there and figure out what jobs are available for them. If they're commuting, we have a cost of commuting calculator so people can go in there and figure out how much of a salary can I really take? versus what I'm spending now from driving 30, 40, whatever. Commuting always costs more than people think it does. Correct. So again, it adds, it gives an, a level of awareness to that. If someone's not from this area, maybe looking to move from Michigan or Louisiana or whatever, there's a cost of living calculator on there so they can get out there and compare. If they're looking at a job, what the cost differences are so they can be better ensured that when they're doing their job search, that they're trying to get a job that at least hopefully pays what they're getting paid now so they understand the cost differences there. And then there's the usual things to do, the aspects of the area as far as the tourist events, eateries, and all the other aspects that, that fuel someone. But again, for us, the big thing is the job board. Because again, we know research is jobs are the reason why people decide to do that. If someone is looking for a job, is listening, going to the website, going to look at our job board, at LiveLoveShenandoah.com is a good way to first start. I have a lot of conversations with Guy Curtis from Laurel Ridge Community College, mm -hmm. and we talk a lot about credentialing and different education opportunities that they offer at the college. They do something similar to be able to say, look, if you go get this credential in welding, mm -hmm. this is what these jobs pay. And we have 15 companies right here in this area that are looking to hire somebody with that skill set. Correct. Again, within our website, it's, some of those factors are built into it. But really the whole purpose of the website is gain awareness. Is we all know that people are busy, they're, they're all their different lives. So if we can hopefully give them some bit of additional information when they're looking to make a job change or looking to move to this community, hopefully they'll be armed with more information than they had before they went to our website so they can make the educated decision that's best for them and or their family. I feel like it's also really good ammunition for parents 
who want their kids to stay here in this community. Maybe they do go off to college, but when they get their degree, come back home, this is why. Because I think we all grow up wherever we grew up, and it's like, oh, I can't wait to get out of the town that I grew up in because there's nothing to do here. People need to take a look in their own backyards now. Well, yeah, it can be a tool, obviously. Our website could be if someone, if they have a son or a daughter, a family member that's outside the area or commuting to the market. It doesn't necessarily have to be them. It could be a friend, a sibling, or whatever to say, look, you really should take time and look at what is your cost of commuting. And then once you figure that out, figure what kind of salary you're looking for, here's a, a, a website that you can go and look at jobs and try to find out is there a job that interests you that pays what you're looking to pay. Because we know that our, it would be nice if our employers paid what people pay in North Virginia, but the reality is that everything's somewhat cost of living based. So again, that cost of commuting calculator gives people at least a starter so they can figure out when they're looking for a job, what the actual salary should look for based on the hard costs that you're spending. Again, the soft mm-hmm. costs or need to be an individual decision. And for someone who's been to college town someplace else that's looking whether they get a job next to their college or moving back home, our cost of living calculator gives them an opportunity to, again, put everything to apples to apples level so they can get a better understanding and not just go by what they perceived in the fact that maybe they perceived there were no good jobs here. Obviously, a lot of things change in four or six years right? when they haven't been there. And maybe they didn't know too much when they left, but again, giving them that resource that they can use to go look in a one-stop, easy-to-use standpoint about what kind of jobs interest you than trying to find it through a match here for you. I feel like that cost of living calculator could be a game changer. A lot of our information and talking to people, there's just a disconnect. And I think that it's just people just haven't taken the time. They think they know what they know. And a lot of people do know what they know. But the website is really meant, again, to add more volume, give them more ammunition to make that best informed decision as they can. And we think the website's been set up that way. And again, that's for us, that's the next big project in addition to the continuing on the social media paid advertisement campaign is the website's been out there for a couple of years. So we're in the process on trying to make that better and better than it was before. So that process will probably start sometime in June. And what do you think is the next step? So somebody is local or somebody from out of the area is listening. They go to the website. Ideally, they pick up the phone and they call here. They no, call the, one of the local companies. Again, it depends on what they're looking for. Go to the website, sign up for the vicinity. They can receive updates on local hiring events, just regional activities and such to keep you in the know amongst all the other ways you're trying to keep in the know about what's going on in your community. If you're considering a job, whether or not you are directly or someone in your family or a friend, send them to the website, let them look at the job board that we have, let them know that the other two calculators are out there so they can get a better handle on putting things on the same level from an actual net money to you, which is obviously important to people. Those are probably the two big things. Sign up on the email list and then check out the job board. Those are the two big factors. Thank you for taking some time to give me a rundown. I'm going to go check it out and send it all to my kid to get him to come back home. How about that? That's all we ask for is just to start that process. I will be back tomorrow with a brand new episode of The Valley today, a few minutes after noon. So meet me here then.